a small but important modification to my model steam engine test plant. The test plant was successful in every way, except for the live steam injector, which was often reluctant to start. In this video I changed the water valve for a different type, and the performance is transformed. Originally the water valve that lets the water through into the injector was just a steam tap, and this isn't a good idea. In an ideal world, a live steam injector needs to move a column of water, without restriction in any part of the water circuit. Inside this steam tap, the hole is blocked by a machined point, and because of this physical constriction, the water flow was restricted. First of all, I disconnect the piping from the injector, and then after I move the piping out of the way, I can rotate the entire assembly to unscrew it from the water tank. And all that's left is the bush into the water tank. This is threaded 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch, as are all of the threads on this steam tap and injector. In the next part of the job, I unscrewed the injector from the water tap and put the steam tap that I was using as a water valve in a safe place. I bought one of these from Blackgate's Engineering. It's a 90 degree injector water valve for 3 16 pipe. This is the correct type of valve to use for a live steam injector. The clue is in the name. And here it is sat on the bench. The construction is quite different to the steam tap. Top tip time. As this is a plug tap, it's important to make sure that the hole is in the correct place, or at least you need to know where it is for fitting the handle. The handle tells me that it is in the right place, and so I'm marking the end with a felt tip pen. I need to know where this is for when I come to fit the handle, more about that shortly. The next part of the job involves applying some nut lock to seal the injector to the valve and the valve into the bush on the water tank. When the time comes to fit the handle, which needs shortening, I will be using Loctite 603. This is a retainer and you must not use it as a sealant. In the workshop that's built onto the kitchen, because currently I'm working on the kitchen table, I'm cutting the handle to length using a cutting disc in the small Proxon motor tool fitted to the bench mount. And here it is, shortened considerably. This clip shows the felt tip pen mark on the end of the water valve. Fitting it is a very simple job. To secure the handle to the tap, I use some Loctite 603 retainer. This is a much better handle, because I know that when it's in this position, it's wide open, and when it's at 90 degrees, it's closed. And internally, this valve does not have any restrictions. It's time to test it. I fill my kettle with cold water, and this is important. Injectors always need a cold water feed and pouring some of the contents of the kettle into the water tank. Vertical means on, horizontal means off, and anywhere in between will regulate the flow of water to make the injector work. There won't be too much narration in the rest of this video, you've seen it all before. First of all I fit the gas tank and put it in a tub of water. With a flame over the chimney I open the gas valve and there's a quick explosion and the boiler's lit. I slowed down the explosion for dramatic effect. To raise steam quickly, I've purposely dropped the water level in the boiler. This will allow me to raise steam a lot quicker. This clip is running at twice normal speed, and I'm lubricating the engine. This engine is quite wonderful. It's a Microcosm M30. Microcosm is a Chinese manufacturer who make extremely high quality engines. And as you can see, it is even fitted with a governor. And in this test, I will find out whether the governor works. I've only run this engine using compressed air. So for the steam test, I am thoroughly oiling all of the moving parts using my normal steam engine lubricating oil. It is not machine oil and it is not motor oil. Currently, there's not much pressure showing on the pressure gauge, but there's enough to run the engine and off it goes. Once the steam pressure inside the boiler arrived at 50 pounds per square inch, I thought it was a good time to test the injector, which picked up immediately. Here you can see it pumping water into the boiler. Then after a while it stopped working. And it occurred to me at this point that injectors work much better if there's some water in the injector water tank. 
These injectors pump water very quickly into the boiler and the tank is quite small. So I refilled it with cold water from the kettle and started again. As the injector was filling the boiler, the pressure did drop. But very soon the pointer on the pressure gauge started to point in the right direction. Both of the engines are now running and the pressure is only 25 pounds per square inch. These engines are very small and they don't use a lot of steam. So in no time at all, the pressure went up to blowing off point. I turned the steam pressure down to these engines because you would not believe how fast they go if you open the steam valves to maximum. The engine on the left is a Microcosm M29 and the one on the right is a later model, the M30. They are both similar yet quite different at the same time. The M29 sits on columns whereas the M30 has cast standards. I used the injector again to bring the water level almost to the top of the glass. And as I didn't need to put too much water into the boiler, the pressure did not drop unduly, but at least it stopped blowing off. The rest of this video is mainly showing these two beautiful engines running. I was quite surprised to find out that the governor on the M30, that's the one on the right hand side in the foreground, actually does work and moves the regulator arm. Later on I show a close-up of this happening, but bear in mind it will only happen when I open the regulator to admit more steam and make it go faster. Here we are once again just about at blowing off point. And that's it from me, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.